So the next talk is on Boomerang Connectivity Table Revisited Applications to Skinian AS, and the talk is given by Ling Song. Uh, thanks for the introduction. Okay, since I use different uh, notations, so I introduce <laughs> Boomerang attacks again. The Boomerang attacks combine two short differential trails to get a long distinguisher. It treats the cipher as two subciphers, A0 and E1. Suppose E1 has a differential alpha to beta with probability P, and E1 has a differential gamma to delta with probability Q, then the probability for the boomerang distinguisher is P square Q square. That is, if we choose the P1, P2 with difference alpha encrypted then to have the corresponding ciphertext C1, C2, and then add the add a data difference to have the new pair of ciphertext C3 and C4, decrypt them to have the plain text P3 and P4. The difference of them will be alpha with probability P square Q square. Actually, a boomerang is a thrown tool. It is said in the Wagner's paper that when you send it properly, it always comes back to you. However, this holds only when the two trails are independent, which are not the case in many applications. The dependency is the key issue for boomerang attacks. As shown before, the dependency can help the attackers. It can also invalidate the attacks. Later, sandwich attacks were proposed to particularly deal with the dependency. The sandwich attack decomposed the cipher into three parts. The middle part, EM, handles the dependency so that the differential trails for the rest of two parts E0 tilde and E1 tilde can be regarded as independent. If the probabilities for the differential trails over E0 tilde and E1 tilde are P tilde and Q tilde respectively, the probability for the boomerang distinguisher can be formulated as P tilde square Q tilde square R. And the R here is actually the probability that the boomerang returns for the EM in the middle, with difference alpha, uh, beta here and the gamma here. Usually, EM contains a few rounds, and in the paper of sandwich attacks, a dedicated analysis was carried out to calculate R. Last year, Seed et al. proposed the boomerang connectivity table, which can calculate R theoretically when EM is of one S-box layer. It can also unify previous observations on the S-box. However, two questions, two problems still remain unsolved. The first is to identify the actual boundaries of EM, which contains dependency. The second is to calculate R, the probability, the probability R, when EM contains multiple rounds. In this work, we propose that the generalized framework of BCD, which enables us to solve these two problems. Some basics of DDT and BCT. DDT records the number of solutions, satisfying the differential alpha to beta. The differential probability is the DDT entry over 2 to the n, where 2 to the n is the size of the input space. And BCT records the number of solutions that uh, such that the boomerang returns for the S-box. And uh, the boomerang probability 
is actually the VCT entry over two to the n, where two to the n is also the size of the input space. Both the VCT paper and the previous talk studied the relation between DDT and BCT. First, let's introduce two sets, XDDT and YDDT. XDDT is the set of input values satisfying the differential alpha to beta. And YDDT is the set for the output values also satisfying the differential. Our starting point is this proposition from the previous talk. It says that the number of inputs, let's say x1, without loss of generality, such that the boomerang returns is the sum of two terms. When the gamma difference here equals beta, the boomerang returns. When gamma here does not equal beta. In this case, the y1 must be in the set y ddt alpha gamma. And after exploring the beta difference, we have the y3. The y3, if the y3 falls into the same y ddt set, y ddt set alpha gamma, the boomerang also returns. So for those uh, for those values, uh, solutions, um, they were counted, they are counted in the second term. And due to the symmetry, the BCT can be calculated uh, using the YDDT or so. And actually we can merge these two terms to have a real expression here. When the EM has one S-box layer in the middle at the connecting point of E0 and E1, the R probability can calculate by the BCT over 2 to the N. Instead of using this expression from the previous slide for BCT, we use a more detailed one. This expression looks more complex, but it is helpful when we extend it to other cases. Similarly, the R probability can be calculated with the set YDDT. Note that in this case, both the alpha and the beta difference are known or fixed. Since this S-box is located at uh, the connecting point, the alpha and the beta are uh, no, from the upper trail and the lower trail. So how about the S boxes far away from the connecting point? For those S box, either alpha or beta is not fixed. Let's look at the figure on the right side. Look at the S box in E0, the difference alpha, gamma, unknown from the upper trail. While the difference beta here, it is the difference between the left facet and the right facet and propagated from the lower trail. We call it uh, the lower crossing difference. The lower crossing difference is not fixed, but it may follow certain distribution. Similarly, for the S-box in E1, the Input difference gamma, output difference uh, beta are known from the lower differential trail. And the, the alpha difference here, which is between the bike facet and the front facet, and propagated from the upper trail. We call it the upper crossing difference. And uh, this difference is also not fixed, but it may follow certain distributions. So. For these S boxes, the crossing differences are not fixed. Next, we are to extend the BCT to these cases and 
taking into account the distribution of these uh, crossing differences. This is our intuition for the generalized uh, BCT. Let's go deeper into the s box in E0. The s box in red is located in the E1. It has an input-output difference alpha, gamma, and its lower crossing difference beta here. Suppose the beta is independent of the upper trail, which, which means the value of beta is not affected by the upper trail. Then we can calculate the R probability in this way. We just take into account the distribution of the lower crossing difference. Actually, when the beta is constant, the calculation is the same as the basic BCT. And if, the, if beta is uniformly distributed, the calculation becomes this, which is identical to the P square Q square in the classical boomerang attack. For S box in E1, we obtain, the, we, we obtain similar results. The only difference is that we consider the distribution for the lower crossing, uh, upper crossing difference alpha here. The result is uh, similar. What if two S boxes are interrelated? In this case, the S box A from E0 and S box B from E1 are interrelated. The interrelation means that the lower crossing difference for S box A comes from S box B and vice versa. In order to handle this case, we introduce a new set, set D BCT. It records the number of solutions such that the boomerang will return with the gamma difference here. Then we calculate the R probability. The R probability is actually the ratio of inputs such that the difference propagated from alpha to uh, gamma, and then gamma propagated to alpha prime, and then it will return with the gam gamma prime here, and the gamma prime propagated back to the beta difference. The beta is actually the lower crossing difference for S box A if it brings the output value back to the same YDDT set, the boomerang will 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 buy will returns. So actually the gamma and the gamma prime can take all possible values. Considering this, the final R is calculated uh, with this. So this other general cases are composed of these three basic cases. And then we can, um, we can propose our generalized uh, framework of BCT, which is captured in this algorithm. First, we initialize the EM with two middle runs, and then extend both trails with probability one towards the other side. Through the extension, we can trace the distribution of the crossing differences. In step three and step four, we identify the upper boundary and the lower boundary respectively. And lastly, we calculate uh, the probability R using formulas in the previous slides. And if a zero R is returned, it means the two trails are not compatible. And note that the boundaries of EM are marked by the rounds where the crossing differences are uniformly uh, distributed. Then we apply the generalized BCT to skinny and AES. We reevaluated the four boomerang distinguishers of skinny and construct a six-round related subkey boomerang distinguisher 
for AS128. Skinny is an SPN lightweight block cipher with a, with a tweet key. Skinny NT denotes the version with block size N and tweet key size T. Next, next I'll show example EM for Skinny64 128 in the related uh, tweaky setting, the final EM contains two rums from the upper trail and four rums from the lower trail. If using the formula P square Q square, the probability for EM should be two to the minus 44. This table shows the detailed information for the trails calculated in seconds on the desktop. With the R probabilities, we can calculate the probabilities for the full distinguisher in this column. These probabilities are much higher than the probabilities evaluated before. We verified the, all the R probabilities and uh, the 17 round distinguisher for skinny 64, 128. This is the result for Skinny. For AS122, we construct a six round related subkey distinguisher. It is known from previous research that the minimum number of active S boxes of a three round related key to differential trails is five. There are only two trails with five active S boxes, while there are 18 trails with six active S boxes. From these three round trails, we select two to construct a six round uh, related subkey boomerang distinguisher, which is shown in this table. And the probability is uh, two to the minus 109.42. In this case, we use the generalized BCT to exclude incompatibility since most combinations are incompatible. And we'd like to mention some properties for EM. The EM, the length of EM is mainly determined by the diffusion effect of the linear layer. And also it depends on the density of the active cells of the trails. The R probability is strongly affected by the properties of the S-box. There is also a lim limitation of the generalized BCT. For a long EM with large and strong S-box, calculating R might be, might be time consuming. And to conclude, in this work, we propose the generalized BCT which enables us to identify the boundaries of dependency and calculate R in the sandwich attack. Future problems to investigate include extension to non-SBOX-based ciphers and improving previous boomerang attacks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions for Ding Song? I have one. Do you think there's a way of applying uh, uh, a version of your results to uh, super S boxes, for instance, S boxes combined with some linear parts? Or I guess it's quite difficult because to uh, calculate the R accurately, we need to know the distribution of the crossing differences. If the S box is too large, I think it's quite difficult. Thank you. Any Thank more you. questions? Okay, so let's thank Ling Song again. Thank you very much.